Hello, everyone. I am Russell Clay, and this is the College Football Weekly Picks uh, podcast. I am excited once again to bring you some Week 5 action. Uh, this week, we are looking at a staggered slate where there's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Monday game. So we got it's almost like a golf tournament where you're going to be waiting a, a weekend. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a hot minute before you get your little results and, and potentially your money if you win. So keep that in mind. Be patient and, and have fun with it. I mean, hey, got, got some entertainment each of the next four of the last five for the next five nights. So that'll be nice. Uh, let's get into it. Calgary versus Winnipeg. Uh, over under a 50.5. Calgary favored by five. Obviously, we're starting to see... The offense is solidify who's good, you know, and, and where the production is going to come from on a consistent basis. We have four weeks of sample size. Most teams have played at least three games, so so there there is that that solid little core we have um, in terms of decision making. So, in terms of cash games, I think we're looking at uh, two running backs here: Jerome Assam and Andrew Harris. Harris obviously on a team where game flow might not go. In Winnipeg's direction, I, I don't, I don't see many, many ways that they come out with a win here. But at the same time, he's such a prominent figure in the passing game that his floor is really high. That's why I think he's a cash game option. If you're looking for two high-end running backs, both in terms of big plays and volume, I think these are are two really good options. Um, obviously, Harris already has two games of 80 receiving yards or more. And he has at least five receptions and 40 yards in every game this year. So he's also getting touches in the run game. But I think that receiving aspect is really important, especially when they get down and, and need to sort of move the ball a little quicker. So keep that in mind. Um, Assam, at least 12 touches um, in each of the last two games. He has a touchdown in two of the last three. I think we're looking at 14 to 18 touches here. Especially if things go right, they're going to grind out the clock with him. Uh, 7300 not a great price, but at the same time, I think the upside's there with with how uh, the the Calgary is is favored there. So I, I really like him um, and, and both of those guys as the cash game plays. Obviously, running back is not not like the NFL in, in terms of of sort of potential potential touches and potential role. Although, who knows? Maybe the NFL's headed this way, too. It sure feels like it. Uh, in terms of tournaments, uh, I'm looking at two guys here, Drew Willie, the quarterback, and Markway McDaniel, um, the wide receiver. M McDaniel is the, the Calgary wide receiver. He's 8K. He has two straight weeks of 70 receiving yards and a touchdown. Obviously, that... That touchdown stuff isn't st sustainable for the entire season, but the 70 yards is is what we're looking at here for the positive indicator. I think his role is is solidifying, and uh, while while this is a tough matchup for them, I, I do see him having quite a bit of potential here. So 8K, it is a little pricey, but I'm okay with it. It's not. It's it's a huge drop down from the top options. So I, I do like him. And Drew Willie, um, the floor is definitely there, but he's at least managed 279 passing yards and one, one um, passing touchdown in every game. While that's not great, he's only 8,900. Uh, again, it's a tournament play. You're kind of looking at him to sort of bump off the top options. If he can get you 20 points, I think you're looking at a pretty pretty decent value there. Obviously, much less expensive than than the top end guys. So a guy to keep in mind there at quarterback. And then Bakari Grant, 5,300. Um, as DK is sort of solidifying their prices, as we are, uh, once we figure out who the good guys are, it seems DK is not too far behind. So um, with that considered, Bakari Grant is is still a really good deal. Um, he, he had his first game last week, five receptions for 89 yards. I really like that. Um, and I really like his price. So I, I think he can continue to go, go in that direction. Obviously you like the over under for, for Calgary. So I think we can fire away there. Uh, next, next game here, Ottawa and Saskatchewan over under 55. So nice, nice big total there. Ottawa's projected 
to win by six and a half or or the spread is six and a half i don't know that'd be tough to get a half a point but you know what i mean uh in terms of cash games so we all know about trevor harris if you've been playing dfs at all trevor harris has just been a monster um throwing for like 400 yards a game at least 390 in every game this year and and it would be higher except that first game obviously he only had limited duty didn't throw a touchdown last week but did get a rushing touchdown so it kind of averaged it out a little bit I, I think we're looking at him even at his pricey 11-2 price tag him chris williams um i wrote up greg ellenson uh in tournaments Obviously, he had a huge 200-yard receiving game last week. That's obviously someone you have to take seriously. He's 8,100. If you are stacking um, Ottawa, I think I think it's realistic to do Harris, Ellenson, and and Chris Williams in a cash game and, and feel pretty decent about it. So um, that's a super high floor there. They're obviously projected for a huge total. Um, I really like Trevor Harris again. I think he's going to approach that 400 passing yard marker again. So you obviously like that. Keep firing away. Um, obviously Chris Williams had a, a down week last week. Um, but you're not worried about that happening two games in a row. In terms of Winnipeg, Naman Roosevelt, an over 110 receiving yards in two of the last three weeks, two of their first three games. Um, he's really becoming the the go-to option in that offense, and you have to like that for less than 8K. So I think you fire away with him there. I think he can fit in just about any lineup and any lineup construction. So a uh, very versatile player. I could see 100 yards happening again. So I'm definitely firing away with him um, and keeping that. In perspective, uh, cash and tournaments for, for Norman Roosevelt. And value here, we got Ricky Collins again. Uh, not quite as cheap as he was last week, and he didn't hit value, so it's kind of a bummer. But at the same time, I, I think we can go with him um, once again as sort of a reasonably priced player. So keep that in mind, um, and, and make sure to... Uh, look at him in, in tournaments. Um, Hamilton and Edmonton. I think that's a very intriguing game. Uh, obviously, the over the over under is is the highest of the slate. Edmonton favored by four, so I think we're looking at some of those players. Mike Riley, been dominant, borderline Trevor Harris, and not quite as dominant, but. Um, he's right there. So I think he's in play. He's, Ooh, sorry guys. I don't know what happened. I just yawned. It's contagious. My dog yawns. So I don't know. I don't know guys. I don't know. Uh, anyway, Mike Riley, uh, obviously in cash game play 11, one, just like Trevor Harris. But I think we're looking at him as a pretty reasonable stacking option with a Darius Bowman. I mean, you just throw Bowman in there. He, he is the premier player. And, and wide receiver in this league. So uh, you look at him, I expect at least 100 yards receiving and hopefully a touchdown in there. If you can get that, that's great. I think that's a great cash option. And obviously with Vegas and everything, you're really looking at a high floor there for Riley and Bowman. So I'm firing away with them. I feel really comfortable with that. We got two more running backs in this game that are pretty intriguing to me. John White and C.J. Gable. Gable obviously was sort of really limited in those first few weeks and then got 17 touches last week. So you like that. Uh, I think he can build off this. Maybe if he gets 15 to 20 touches again, you're going to love that price of 5,700. So that's definitely what I'm looking at there. John White, 7,700. Obviously much more expensive, but he has a really high floor in terms of uh, of compared to to other running backs. He didn't score a touchdown last week, and he lost a fumble the week before. Um, so it's it, even even with sort of some of those things not working out for him, he's still doing well. So um, I think the upside is there. Twenty point fantasy upside for the running back position. I really like him in that spot. And Tequan Underwood, obviously, he had a big play last week, forty yarder. Uh, I think we can continue to expect. Plays like that, obviously he didn't break it for a touchdown, and he kind of disappointed. He didn't reach value. 
Uh, but at 4,100, I think you can throw yourself right at him again and feel pretty comfortable. So he's the guy I'm looking at uh, as, in terms of values there. I, I think you can fire away with him in tournaments once again. Last game of the night, by far the lowest over under, 47.5. That's something that you really got to take into account there. That's that's really low. Uh, Toronto favored by three and a half. Brendan Whitaker, I'm okay with him, and Vidal Hazelton. Uh, they're, they're cash options for, for what that game can provide, but there isn't really – these aren't really the cash options you're looking to go to. You're looking to pay up for, for some of those big over-unders. Um, Whitaker – Obviously, he's been involved in both the passing and receiving game. Um, he only got 11 touches last week, but six receptions, 54 yards, and a touchdown. Obviously, high floor because of the receptions, um, and I think that'll continue. I just He's averaging five receptions a game, so um, I think you just fire away with him at 6,600, one of the better values of the week. Vidal Hazelton, over 60 receiving yards in every game this year. 7,300, not, not a great value, but at the same time, uh, he is the number one receiver in that offense, I finally admitted. And uh, 7,300 is pretty reasonable for that. So that's okay for me. They're, they're cash options, more tournament than anything else, because I don't think you want to really go at either of these teams. Uh, BJ Cunningham sort of making his first pseudo start uh, because of injury last week kind of subbed in for, for again, injuries, six receptions for 63 yards. You really like that. Uh, obviously, Cunningham was a prolific college receiver at Michigan State, played a few years in the NFL, danced around with the Dolphins for a little bit, didn't end up making it, but I, I really like him here. I think he can be a really good CFL wide receiver. So 5,400, I, I think he can continue on sort of building on that pace from last week. I really like him quite a bit. Uh, and in that same vein, Nick Lewis, also because of injuries, obviously the, the five receptions for 33 yards isn't what you were looking for last week. But at the same time, I, I think you can fire at him again at 6,100. I like him more than Cunningham just because his role is a little more solidified. But uh, 700 cheaper, so if you you, it's kind of wherever the roster construction fits. I like Lewis more, but if you can jump down 700, definitely go for Cunningham. Uh, and the last guy of the night, Toronto receiver Kenny Shaw. Uh, he's kind of the the DPP version of Vidal Hazelton. Uh, he has higher upside and and sort of um, a really cheap price. So that's almost three three k that you're, you're saving there by going to Kenny Shaw. I think he's a really nice tournament uh, punt. And and in in this type of game, that's really all I'm looking for. So um, as always, uh, fire away. I think this is going to be a fun slate. Um, we got some pretty uneven games this week. So definitely keep that in mind when you're targeting your cash and tournament lineups. As always, thanks for tuning in. And check out Daily Fantasy Cafe for all our great tools and content.